This is a video in a series of videos designed to help students understand how to create data models using UML. In this video, we assume that we've already created a basic model that recognizes the classes and associations between the classes. Now we're going to enhance these diagrams by adding stereotypes to provide further information about the classes themselves. A stereotype, as you see here, provides a way of extending UML by defining simple terms and using them to clarify UML elements and their participation in a system. As I mentioned, we're going to be creating stereotypes for classes to better understand what types of classes are being modeled. And so what you need when you're creating stereotypes is to have an ontology or a set of terms that explain generic categories of phenomenon, in this case classes. Because we're in a business course, we're going to focus on a pattern that's very common in business environments to be able to identify stereotypes for our classes. This pattern is referred to as the REA pattern, or Resources, Events, and Agents, and is a model that's been um, in the academic literature since the late 70s and has been adopted by Workday as a way of looking at how to develop systems in an enterprise environment. We're going to show in this video how there will be types of classes based on those resources, events, and agents, and how the diagrams become more readable when we've specified for each class what type of a class is it. In each case, stereotypes uh, have a standard naming convention, and that is that all stereotype names begin with lowercase letters, and you'll see that in the diagrams that we're going to be developing. Before we can enhance the diagrams with stereotypes, I want to take a moment to introduce the REA template. Resources are anything that are under the firm's control that provide value, and of which there are a limited quantity. So you can begin to understand resources by thinking about the assets under the firm's control. Uh, their building, their equipment, their inventory, those are all resources. But resources are broader than assets. You can also think about um, advertising time. That's something that's under the firm's control of which there's a limited quantity and that provides value, even though it's not something that would typically appear on a firm balance sheet. Economic events are the second typical class that we see in business. And economic events are occurrences in time that change the quantity of a resource. So some economic events, such as cash receipt or purchase, increase the quantity of resources, whereas other economic events, such as sale or cash disbursement, reduce the quantity of a resource. Finally, there are agents that participate in business. And in the REA template, we recognize a difference between the internal agents, those who are working on behalf of the company being modeled, and the external agents, or the trading partners with whom we're in business. Finally, you could also have location as an optional uh, stereotypical class that occurs in business, um, although we won't include it in this um, example. So each of these resources, events, and agents can be represented as a stereotype to enhance the readability of the UML diagram. So the pattern that we see in business is that economic events occur in pairs. There's an economic increase event that's paired in a duality association with a decrease or decrement event. Think about sales and cash receipts or purchases and cash disbursements. Now for each economic event, we'll see that there is a resource associated with it, the resource that's either being increased or decreased. There will be at least one internal agent and at least one external agent. And so if we complete the pattern, you see that there's a pair of economic events, both of which have an REA pattern associated with it, the resource, event, and two agents. So let's continue the earlier example with the hospital. What would the hospital's operation process look like? Well, the operation itself is an economic event in which the hospital uses up many of its resources in order to provide some value to their patients. So in this case, I extended the earlier model by showing not only the operating room, which shows here as a stereotypical resource, but I added in addition the equipment as another example of resource to demonstrate that there could be more than one 
inventory, more than one resource that's being reduced by the economic event of the operation. For both of these resources that are associated with the operation, we have stock flow associations drawn in between the resource and the event. Now additionally, there's an extension to the basic template with a hospital because we have two different types of internal agents. We have the doctors and we have the nurses, but both of those represent internal agents. So I've used the stereotype internal agents to be associated with those classes. Finally, we have the patient who is the external agent associated in, with the operation itself. Finally, if we were to complete the REA pattern, we'd recognize that the hospital was not willing to give up all of its resources without receiving something in exchange. And so the completed REA diagram for the operation would also recognize the cash receipt as another class of the stereotype economic event. And the cash receipt is usually recorded and performed by an accounts receivable clerk who is the internal agent. And the check itself comes from the insurance company who's the external agent. That cash receipt is an economic event that increases the resource cash. So again, we have a stock flow relationship. There's a duality association between the operation and the economic event. And we've specified inside agents and outside agents for the associations between the agents and the economic events. Ideally, you understand at this point that showing the stereotypes allows the reader to have more information about the classes that are being represented in the diagram. They also become very helpful to systems that are built on object-oriented platforms because then the classes can inherit, inherit behaviors or um, characteristics based on cla the stereotypical class. This concludes the video on stereotypes and you can continue to learn about how to enhance the model further with multiplicities and attributes.